Joining me now, Washington Examiner, chief political correspondent and a Fox Business contributor, Byron York. Byron, always great to see you. 78 on Inauguration Day, 79 now, 82 in the next election cycle, 86 if he were to finish his second term. Um, the oldest president to end his tenure was Ronald Reagan. He was 77 years old. For some Americans, age is just a number. When you are commander in chief, many feel it means a lot more. Your thoughts? Well, the 86 is the big number for a lot of the Democrats who are talked about in this New York Times article uh, in the sense that they're worried about President Biden uh, running again, especially since he is showing signs of age now. And the, the article talked to a number of anonymous White House staffers who said they were concerned about things like the president shuffling along sometimes when he walks. They were worried he would trip on a wire. Uh, he loses his place sometimes in public remarks, maybe has a hard time remembering names, uh, loses his train of thought. Uh, they all hold their breath uh, for him to get through various public uh, addresses. And finally, uh, it said that his trip to the Middle East, which is going to happen this week, they had originally planned it to be part of a larger trip to Europe last month, uh, but then decided they shouldn't do that because a 10-day trip would be too arduous mm -hmm. for a man his age. So Joe Biden's age is affecting how this White House runs. And they're just getting started in the first term. And so you have to think about what the repercussions would be um, if we went longer yeah. term. So the New York Times obviously uh, leans left. And 64%, they say, of those who were polled would choose a different candidate. They would nominate a different Democrat candidate in 2024. What do you think that says about what's happening? It's an, well, it's an absolutely extraordinary number because the Times followed up this story about Biden's age with a story today of their new poll. And it did show that 64 percent of Democrats of the president's party would like to see another, a different nominee in 2024. Only 26 percent said they would like to see Joe Biden renominated. And then when they were asked, those Democrats again, not, not Republicans, Democrats, they were asked, well, why is it that you would like to see a new nominee? They mentioned Joe Biden's age most of all. Mm -hmm. It's something that concerns them, and especially since if he were reelected, the president would serve until age 86, which is never Nothing like that is even even close to that has ever happened in American history. Then let me ask you this, putting the numbers aside and, and people's judgments aside, internally, whether it's Karine Jean-Pierre, the press secretary, or it's Pete Buttigieg or Kamala Harris, they're all mm -hmm. saying they want him to run again. I think it was Karine Jean-Pierre said he has more energy yes. than she does. Um, listen to this soundbite on Kamala and uh, Pete Buttigieg. Yes, I do expect him to run. I'll support him. And let me tell you why he's going to have a lot to be proud of. Listen to President Biden. He intends to run. And if he does, I intend to run with him. <laughs> so there you go. I mean, I realize to a certain extent this is what they have to do. Um, but at the same time, people see the reality of the situation also. And they'd like to know that he's not potentially running and that you've got a good backup situation ready to go for the party. Well, they don't. Right. I mean, that, that's the extraordinary thing. First of all, both of those people, the vice president and the secretary of transportation, both ran against Joe Biden in the Democratic primaries in 2020 and, and lost to him. But if the president were to decide not to run, this sets off a real dilemma for Democrats because his obvious natural successor would be the vice president. But she doesn't poll very well either, mm -hmm. and there would be some Democrats who are saying they need a new candidate uh, to run. On the other hand, uh, pushing the sitting vice president off the ticket would be really, really difficult for Democrats. Yeah, and Kamala Harris, uh, first female vice president, had such an opportunity here that I think she absolutely squandered. Um, but having said that, you're right. It's difficult to say that she'll be, you know, the top of the ticket next time. If that's tough for people to swallow. Um, having said that, Fox News power rankings predicting that Republicans are going to take control of the House um, in November. Uh, midterm elections are coming. You know, your thoughts on, on how people are feeling, where we stand, how possibly the uh, overturn of Roe v. Wade plays into things. I mean, there's a lot of things until we get there. Well, uh, a lot of strategists feel that a Republican takeover of the House is very, very, very likely. Not the Senate, 
uh, the Senate is still a question mark in some areas. But the House, they feel, is very likely. As a matter of fact, they, they tend to believe that these elections are s somehow get kind of set in stone several months ahead of time. They do not see uh, the road decision, they do not see gun issues mm. uh, making a significant difference uh, in in the midterm elections because the issues of the economy and most specifically uh, of inflation are so strong right now and there's such unhappiness. In that New York Times poll only 13 percent of those surveyed said that they thought the country was on the right track. Yeah, that's... That is a recipe for a change election. That number is far too low. Byron, always great to see you. Your insight's so helpful to break it all down for us. Thank you. Thank you. All right.